QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Statement Charges. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our QuickBooks desktop sample raw castle construction practice file provided by QuickBooks. We're going through the setup process. We do every time maximizing the home page. Going to the view drop down, open windows list on the left hand side. Reports drop down, company and financial. Looking at that PL profit loss income statement tab. 010124 to 123124. The date range January through December. 2024 and then we're going to customize the report or i am fonts and numbers so i can change the font size up to 12 okay yes please okay opening up another report one more report company and financial this is going to be the balance sheet standard date range or change in the date 12 31 2, 4, the one date customizing that report so we can change the fonts and the numbers to 12 okay yes please okay that's the setup process we do every time back to the home page we've been focusing in on the customer cycle which could also be thought of as the sales cycle the revenue cycle the accounts receivable cycle where at the end of the day we're hoping to have an increase to our checking account typically from goods and services we provide to the customer now we're going to consider this alternative arrow chart you can see down here that goes up to the receive payments and then the deposit. So most of the time when we're billing a customer, we're going to be creating an invoice. That's what will be done for most types of businesses. But it's possible that you want to create a charge, possibly some kind of recurring charge without the creation of an invoice to do that we could go into the statement charges. So for example, possibly we have just a reoccurring charge that we don't want to create an invoice for and we want to put it directly into uh, this item here, which looks kind of like a register. You also might get here, we can close this back out by going to the customer center, which you could go to here, or you can go to the customer dropdown customer center. And if I choose an individual customer, let's say this customer here, and I want to, to look at that detail, I can go to the more options down below and I can look at the statement charges down here, which once again will give me that, that information in this format, a register type of format. I could close this back out. Let's choose one that has a bit more activity going on. Let's hit the drop down and say, I wanna see customers with open balances and pick one. This one's got a little bit more stuff. Let's pick, let's pick this one. And then let's go to the manage transactions. Let's go to the statement charges. And then we can enter something directly into this format. Let's do it once again in the, in the next year. So it'll kind of stand out. So I'm going to make this as of 03 this time, 1525, because the last year that we've been working in, in this sample file was 2024. And then you can enter the data in here. So we've got the item. We could still add an item. Let's just add another item. This would be similar to entering something on an invoice. I'm going to just make it a service item. I'm just going to call it item three to make it easy. Item three. I forgot the three. I just called it item. And so then we'll just call it item three. And let's say it was for $500. We're not going to have any tax applied to it. Let's make it just $50 no tax applied to it so i'm going to say none and then the account i'm just going to take it to let's take it to another account let's call it uh uh monthly let's just call it fees income or something like that i'm going to set it up i'm just going to call it an income account there it is okay okay so there we have it tab tab 
So there's the item. I'm not going to put a class. That's going to be a specialized area. You might not have classes on your file unless you turn the classes on. And then if I say, okay, let's record it. So there we have it. Closing this back out. If I look at the detail in this format, now we've got this statement charge. There's the statement charge of the $50. If I double click on it, it goes directly to the register. If I then go to the uh, reports and I take a look at this from a report format on the balance sheet, we now have the accounts receivable going up with the statement charge. Let's, let's change the dates on this thing. Hold on. This is as of 12 31 to five. Let's go into the receivables here. Change the first date. 010125. Okay. And so there's the statement charge, $50. Double clicking takes me to like that register format. Closing this back out. The other side going to the income statement. Income statement left hand side. We're going to say this is as of 010125 this time to 123125. And now we've got that fees income. So we took it there directly. So there it is. So that looks correct. And then if I look at the sub ledger report, which is similar to what we saw in the customer center reports drop down and we go into the sub ledger for the accounts receivables, which is customers and receivables. And we look at the customer balance detail. Then we had that particular customer. I don't know which customer it was, which was $50. It was the customer of Birch, Birch, Birch. So we've got down here, Birch, there it is. There's the $50 right here. Okay, and then the point is that the point, the total of this 93.57.93 ties out to, closing this out, the balance sheet the 93.57.93 and then you can carry this through as you normally would go into the home page the next step uh, we're going to bring this up to receiving the payment which would be a similar process as going from the invoice to the receive payment which you can click on here type in the customer uh, so we could say let's go in here and say we have birch and so there it is and it pulls in just like an invoice would and we can check off that item we're going to put this into undeposited funds in a similar way as with the invoice so i'm going to say all right let's save that i, I have the save button because i've expanded the size of this thing so i'm just going to x and then say save that way should have a save and close button at the bottom and then we're going to go back to the balance sheet and we're going to say double clicking on the accounts receivable 010125 so now we've got the $50 for the accounts receivable. I put the wrong date on it, didn't I? So let's go back on over to the home page and let's go to the receive payment. I'm going to go back, back. There it is. I'd like to change the date to 01. What did I say? 03. Let's say 20. Oh, 25. Let's do that. Close it. Save it and then go back to the balance sheet, double click on the accounts receivable, 010125. So there it is going in and out like we would expect it to be doing. That's also gonna happen on the sub ledger and the customer center, which will support that. So here's the statement charge and the payment. If I go down here and I look at the statement charges in this format, so now you can see those, those two going in and out in like a register type of format. Closing this back out, the last step would be that we might receive the payment if I go back to the balance sheet just in a similar fa to the home page. In a similar fashion here, we can go to receive payments and then say we're going to take that $50 and receive the payment and say OK. And it's going to go into the checking account. Let's make this as of 03225. It's going to come out of undeposited funds and go into the checking account here, saving it and closing it and then going over to the balance sheet and we can then see in the check-in account date range 010125 to 1231 there's the $50 going into the check-in account and it's going to come out of the undeposited funds account 010125 coming out of the undeposited funds closing that back out so to me I think most people if I go back to the home page 
will generally use you know an invoice instead of a, a statement charge but maybe uh, it, in some cases if you've got like a reoccurring charge or something like that and you don't want to create an invoice and just want to go right to a statement then uh, you can you could use that format and you can see again that it goes into kind of like a, a register type of format here.